Okay, so uh, thank you for participating in this uh, webinar session. Uh, once again, my name is uh, Muhammad Firdaus Ben Kasim. And for today's session, okay, I'm going to share my uh, research work uh, regarding on the nickel rich cathode materials for lithium ion batteries. So before we start, I hope you can uh, clear hearing my voice. So hopefully uh, this webinar session goes smoothly. So this is my uh, contents overview. So at first place, okay, I'm going to give a little bit introduction into the usage of the lithium for the past, current and the future use of a lithium. Okay, and after that, we are going to discuss a little bit into the uh, commercialized uh, cathode materials in uh, lithium ion batteries. And then uh, we move forward to the uh, instrument that we can use to uh, study the fundamental of cathode materials. For, so for uh, today, I'm going to discuss in terms of uh, X-ray diffraction scanning electron microscopy and also the x-ray photo electron spectroscopy and the last part will be my uh, example of my own research so uh, for the past two decades okay at the 2001 okay from the total of the uh, lithium according to global market around 70,000 tons of the lithium uh, carbonate equivalent, only 5% lithium has been used to produce batteries, okay, which is uh, back then uh, 20 years ago. But after that, interestingly, 15 years later, okay, uh, report show that the use of the lithium content increased up to 40%, which is it become a major use for the batteries production. Okay, and what happened in the future is that predicted by the Dish Bank is that the market of the uh, lithium ion batteries okay, will grow two times bigger than the entire lithium market today. So the batteries will be used for the electric vehicles, the e-bikes, traditional batteries, wearable device, and also as the energy storage. So for today, the major concern of the battery scientists, okay, they try to focus the batteries of the lithium ion batteries for the energy storage and also for the use of the electric vehicles. So before we go further, of course, uh, uh, just the overview of the uh, cross section of inside the lithium ion batteries. So here, why it called rechargeable lithium ion batteries because the battery can be used reuse again okay after we charge and we use and then we can recharge again and then we use that is what we call as a rechargeable batteries so for the charging process what is actually happen is that the lithium ions inside the positive electrode which is the cathode okay once you plug in so what happened you give the voltage and then this lithium inside the structure of the cathode will move okay toward the anode through the electrolyte okay and the anode will hold the lithium ions temporarily and then after that you use your handphone for example you use your handphone without charge it so that is in the condition of discharge state so when you are using your handphone without plug in what really happened is that the lithium that being hold temporarily in the uh, anode which is the commercialized anode that has been used is the graphite so this lithium will be moved forward will be moved backward toward the original crystal structure of cathode materials so they will uh, take place into their origin so this will be repeated okay repeatedly uh, happen inside our lithium ion batteries so that is the simple mechanism of what happened inside the rechargeable lithium ion batteries so for my research i'm concerned on the uh, cathode materials why because the cathode material is the active material that hold the energy density which is whether the uh, lithium ion batteries can hold 
larger energy density which is it can store more energy okay it depend on the cathode and also the lifespan of the battery is also depend on the cathode so it is a very crucial things to improve this cathode uh, material further so that we can increase more in term of energy density and also their lifespan so according to the uh, one of the Nobel laureate which is uh, prof akira yoshino okay uh, last year of his uh, presentation at the uh, Nobel laureate lecture he said that he tried to vision of the uh, ai electric vehicle which is to, in order to uh, realize that application we need to have the rechargeable batteries that can hold up to 5000 cycle which is for today the lithium ion batteries for the electric vehicle only can hold up to 1800 cycle or maybe less than it okay uh, so a lot of uh, battery scientists try to uh, design and modify the existing of the commercialized uh, cathode materials in order to obtain the best recipe of the cathode materials that can hold higher energy density and also uh, which excellent capacity retention means that it has the longer lifespan compared to conventional uh, cathode materials so this is the example of the uh, uh, cathode structure of the commercialized uh, cathode material that has been used in our rechargeable lithium ion batteries today so among them okay we have the layered oxide cathode materials we have a spinel oxide uh, cathode materials and also we have the poly anion cathode materials so each one of these structure, okay, these three structure has uh, uh, similarities. Uh, similarities in terms of these structure have the pathway for the lithium ion to move in and out from their structure. So, by having that capability, we call it as an integrated structure. In the lithium ion battery, it is very important for the cathode material to have these properties. Why? Because we want to release the lithium ion so that the lithium ion can move in and out from the structure. Then the electron can move from the anode and the cathode. So that is the basic idea about the cathode materials. Okay. So it need the structure of cathode material need to have the uh, pathway for the ions to move in and out. And then this is the comparison of the five uh, commercial cathode material exist nowadays. So we have the uh, our conventional lithium cobalt oxide, which is this uh, uh, the first uh, commercialized cathode materials. Okay, for the past two decades, okay, lithium cobalt oxide. And as you can see in this uh, spider web, it has the high specific energy and quite a high cost. Uh, and uh, in terms of safety, lifespan, and specific power. And then after that, the researchers tend to uh, modify lithium cobalt oxide. Okay, why they want to modify lithium cobalt oxide? Because the cobalt itself is very toxic and very expensive. So they tend to reduce the content of cobalt. So they're able to produce two uh, new uh, cathode materials which based on nickel cobalt manganese and also nickel cobalt aluminium right so these three is belong to the layered hexagonal structure which is the layered oxide whereas this one refer to the spinel type and this one refer to poly anion type okay so i would like to draw your attention at here this cathode material has been uh, commercially used as a cathode materials for the uh, electric vehicle for the BMW whereas uh, for the Tesla they want to use a nickel cobalt aluminium in their electric vehicle that has been used uh, uh, nowadays 
So between these two, okay, in term of specific energy, they are quite uh, similar. But in term of cost, NCA is much uh, expensive compared to the nickel cobalt manganese. But the Tesla try to modify further about this one so that it can compete and it can has the high energy capacity and long life cycle. But for today, uh, they only can uh, go up to if i'm not mistaken 1500 or 1800 cycle but it is far from the vision of the prof akira yoshino that said that in order to realize the electric vehicle we need to have 5000 cycle so for your information based on department energy of us it is stated that in order uh, the threshold commercialized for electric vehicle for single charge it should have uh, 300 miles for single charge in terms of kilometer around 480 kilometer. Okay, but for the Tesla, it, uh, it, can, it can only go up to uh, around 380 kilometer for the single charge. So still got a long journey, okay, in order to satisfy the vision by Prof Akira Yoshino which is we look forward in the future we will be able to uh, realize that okay so uh how we are going to improve okay our catered materials so a lot of battery scientists okay think a lot about this one which is how they want to improve the cathode material that can possess high energy capacity why retain the capacity retention which has the long life cycle so uh, okay so based on that thinking a lot of strategy okay being produced for example in terms of coating technique in terms of shaping of the crystal in terms of structuring of the crystal and also in terms of doping technique all of this technique is the purpose is to improve the capacity and also the lifespan of the cathode material so that at the end of the day we have the rechargeable batteries that can be used in terms of low cost and also long long lifespan okay so for the characterization of the materials like i said earlier okay in my work the basic instrument that i will use to study the fundamental properties of the synthesized cathode materials i will use x-ray diffraction so by using x-ray diffraction actually we can obtain a different kind of information depend on how we analyze it so we can obtain qualitative information and also we can obtain quantitative information in terms of qualitative information we can uh, confirm whether we already obtain our desired uh, product or our desired cathode materials or not but in term of quantitative which is much in, more interesting than qualitative is that we can get the crystallographic information of our synthesized cathode materials i'm going to show the result after this the next I use a scanning electron microscope to observe uh, morphology and also the crystallite dimension. In batteries, we have uh, secondary particles and also the primary particle. It is very important to observe these two things because it will contribute to the electrical, electrochemical performance of the uh, cathode materials. So, uh, in my case, I love to use uh, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. Why this is my PhD actually. So uh, for X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, you can study a lot of things actually. Okay, you can study in terms of oxidation state. Okay, it can reveal what kind of uh, oxidation state that exists in your uh, product or in your sample. Instead, uh, besides that it can give you more information regarding on the nature of the bonding for each element inside your molecule so for me that is quite important because we want to observe in terms of uh, stability what happened if we do what happened if we code the material so it will cause a stress to the uh, crystal structure and then you can observe all of these things through the xps because xps deal with the electron in the orbitals 
So you can observe this uh, kind of information by using the X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. All right. For the fabrication of cathode materials, okay, this is our cathode material, which is the active material that we synthesize using the combustion method. And this is the binder, which is we use PTFE. And this is the carbon additive, we use a super P. Okay. By mix this thing together, by using ratio 18, 10, and 10%, 10 and then we paste onto the grid, it will look like this one. And then after that, we will be heat on the oven. So to let it dry, and then we will assemble, assemble the half cell of the lithium ion batteries inside the glove box. Okay, this tool is very important because in order to do research in the lithium ion batteries, it is necessary for you to have the glove box system because it control the uh, environment of the uh, assembling cathode materials because uh, lithium metal is the pyrochloric substance where it will explode once uh, exposed to the moisture. So by using this tool, you can control the moisture content, you can control the oxygen content. So it's very important to have these things. And then this is our battery tester. It connect directly. And then we assemble anode, cathode, electrolyte, and also separate inside this system. And then we will uh, place them together inside this Teflon holder, which is the uh, coin cell type configuration. All right. So uh, now I'm going to share my uh, research work. Okay. From the past study, which is our team has been able okay, to improve from the uh, lithium cobalt oxide, we'll be able to reduce content of cobalt oxide up to 70%, which is, this is the work from my uh, supervisor, Professor Dr. Nolida Kamaru Zaman. And then she has successfully reduced the content of cobalt up to 70%, which hold the uh, energy capacity that comparable to the uh, conventional lithium cobalt oxide, which is, that is the, uh, the finding is quite, is uh, well agreed with the other researcher, which is the, uh, things that okay they found that by reducing 70 percent is the the best of the uh nickel rich cathode materials and of course some of them nowadays try to use a nickel up to 90 percent and cobalt is uh, 0 0.1 0 point uh cobalt is 10 percent why because we aim to get rid of cobalt actually but it is quite difficult because by get rid of cobalt, we will lose in terms of stability and we will lose in terms of uh, capacity retention. So somehow cobalt is very important, which is plays a role in the uh, cathode materials also. So in my research work, we use this as a base, which is a lithium nickel, 70% nickel, cobalt 30% oxygen. Okay. So my work, I'm going to modify this further to improve in terms of capacity retention and also to improve in terms of their uh, energy capacity. So I'm using uh, the technique of uh, dop doping technique to improve this uh, cathode materials further. So uh, before we go details about the uh, result, so this is our uh, methodology to synthesize uh, cathode materials. So like I said, we use a combustion method, which is a quite simple method. So at the first place, we have the starting materials. This starting material will be dissolved in the deionized water. Okay. And after that, we have fuel, which is the combustion agent. We will dissolve in the ionized water also in a separate beaker. And after that, these two beakers will be mixed and then will be stirred around one hour to obtain homogeneous solution. And after that, we will be heat uh, at 250 degrees C until combustion occur, then we will obtain uh, our precursor and this precursor will be undergo uh, annealing process at 700 degrees C for 24 hours. So this is the XRD result. So like I said, if you do the qualitative, you will only has the information regarding on the uh, phase 
uh, of your synthesized materials. But this is the extra D pattern for quantitative analysis, which is you can do this by performing re well refinement methods. And for me, I'm using the software of uh, Expert High Score Plus, and this is not a free software. Okay, by uh, performing re well refinement, like I said. Uh, by performing quantitative analysis, you can obtain uh, information regarding on the crystallographic information, which is very important to know the nature of your uh, crystal structure. Okay, you will have this value after you do, after you performing the re refinement methods. Okay, you have the A exists, you have the C exists, you have the information regarding the volume, you have the information regarding on the occupancy of each atoms inside your crystal structure, and also you have the uh, information regarding the atomic distance of your uh, atoms inside the crystal structure. Okay. I would like to draw your attention at C exists. Uh, lithium nickel cobalt is our pristine sample, and titanium dope sample is our modified sample. And as you can see, for C exists, it is well known, well studied that by having larger uh, C exists, okay, by having uh, expansion on C exists, it will ease the lithium, uh, it will ease the lithium movement, okay, because the lithium move towards their uh, transition metal uh, pathway, okay, transition, transition metal slabs. So it will give the advantage and it will improve electrochemical performance further, okay. And the other things that the major problem with the nickel rich cathode material itself is that the presence of the ion mixing, which is this is the uh, major challenge of the nickel rich cathode materials, okay, because we try to avoid to having a uh, cation mixing, but unfortunately, by having nickel rich cathode material, which is we have the larger amount of the nickel content inside the cathode materials, so it is very difficult to avoid this situation. So we only possible to minimize the presence of the cation mixing, so we can quantize the uh, value present of cation mixing inside our crystal structure by performing verifiement. So we obtain here for the pristine sample, it has around 5% of cation mixing. What is the cation mixing? I'm going to explain to you uh, using the image illustration after this. And then by substitute or by doping with the titanium, the value of cation mixing reduced to about 2%. So this means that we are able to reduce the presence of cation mixing by the doping technique, but the choice of dopant is very important because it will uh, influence all the things in terms of crystal structure and also in terms of electrochemical performance itself. So this is the illustration that we come out from this value and this is the information regarding the uh, atomic distance okay so i'm going to explain here so this is the ideal crystal structure for the hexagonal uh, layered cathode materials so we have the lithium layers or lithium slabs we have the transition metal layer right here or transmit uh, transition metal slabs so this is the lithium this one the red color is the oxygen and this one belongs to the transition metal. So ideally, it will be looks like this one. But unfortunately, for the practical, sorry, for the practical, okay, it will has a defect in terms of cation mixing, in terms of uh, oxygen vacancy, which I do not study here. So. Uh, in terms of cation mixing, what is mean by cation mixing is that this lithium, as you can see, at the ideal uh, crystal structure, this lithium will take place at the transition metal site. This is only happen for the lithium ion and also nickel two plus ion. So it do not happen for the other transition metal ion. It only happen for lithium ion and also nickel two plus ion. Why this happen? This is well studied by the other researchers also. This happen due to the similarities in terms of the ionic size between lithium ion and also nickel two plus ions. So um, Besides that, okay, based on this information, crystallographic information that we extract from the re refinement, 
okay we obtain that by substitute with or uh, by doping with the titanium what happened is that the expansion here in term of atomic distance between transition metal and the oxygen metal okay whereas in term of atomic distance lithium with the oxygen this this atomic distance become shorter as you can see here okay lithium or lithium to oxygen distance become shorter whereas the transition metals to the oxygen become larger why that happen of course titanium is the uh, more larger compared to the nickel to plus compared to the cobalt so of course it will cause a stress to the crystal structure and the electron surrounding will cause the greater repulsion so cause the uh, oxygen to be uh, to be pushed away so cause the uh, distance become larger and become uh, uh, the distance for the lithium to the oxygen become shorter this is a uh, great information because by having this information we expect that okay by having this information we expect that the uh, energy uh, the barrier energy to remove this lithium okay to remove the lithium will be increased so that means it will be difficult a little bit to remove this lithium compared to the one that has a larger distance of lithium to the oxygen so we will take a look up at the result of the electrochemical performance after this so this is the scanning electron microscope like i said based on scanning electron microscope we can observe in terms of the shape of the crystals that we synthesize so based on our finding okay this is our pristine sample for a c and e okay in term of uh uh, FISEM in term of HR time in term of uh, energy dispersion spectroscopy whereas uh, for the B D and F belong to the modified sample which is titanium dope sample and in as you can see here okay the uh, crystallite size for the cathode materials once doped with the titanium has been reduced okay this modified sample has smaller crystallite size compared to the pristine sample and for your information this image uh, has been taken at a similar magnification so you can see here okay this is the uh, we measure the dimension of the crystal using the FISAM and then you can see roughly uh, the the uh, crystal size of the FISAM is around uh, 40 range up to uh, 98% and uh, 98 nanometer whereas for the pristine sample it has more than uh, 150 nanometer okay for the crystal size whereas for this one is just a confirmation of the uh, this spacing of 003 plate which is the highest intensity in the xrd which is a very important for the uh, cathode materials and eds confirmed that we have successfully okay introduced uh, titanium content inside the inside the uh, cathode materials so for the charge discharge studies okay this is the charge discharge studies for the pristine sample this is the charge discharge study for the uh, modified sample so as you can see in this profile is quite different okay this modified uh, cathode material which is titanium dope sample has more precise value uh, okay compared to different cycle okay we do the cycle up to 70 cycle and the value of the uh, discharge capacity is uh, quite similar so we translate into the specific discharge capacity c so as you can see here the discharge capacity up to 70 cycle for the titanium dope sample is excellent in term of capacity retention compared to the one of the uh, pristine sample okay this is a quite a uh, large difference in term of electrochemical performance all right so we can see clearly in this value so you can see that at, for the first cycle we charge and we discharge we charge the modified and then we discharge the modified okay and up to 70 cycle we can see that the titanium dope sample can retain up to 70 cycle about 132 milliampere gram 
compared to the pristine sample that only can retain 86 milliampere gram uh, from their initial discharge capacity. So in term of capacity retention, this titanium dope sample has about 92% of their initial discharge capacity, which is very excellent in terms of capacity retention. Okay, so in terms of XPS, okay, we do the uh, studies to find out what is the oxidation state of our element in the crystal structure and what is actually happen on the surface of the crystal structure, which is the battery is the surface dependent mechanism. So we found that, okay, before that, this is the result of the uh, high resolution or narrow scan of XPS. By looking at these things, you know that this is not only one component or one uh, environment inside uh, element of the lithium, element of the nickel, element of the cobalt, element of oxygen. So how you are going to identify what kind of element that actually exists in your materials. So you can do that by performing the convolution and you found that, okay, for the lithium, we found that it has a two component of a lithium, which is belong to the lithium. Uh, we name it as a lithium one and lithium two. And then for nickel, it has a nickel 2 plus, nickel 3 plus, cobalt 2 plus, cobalt 3 plus. And the, for the uh, oxygen, it has two conditions, which is at a lower binding energy than high binding energy. For the lithium one, which is a low binding energy here, is due to the dangling bond or incomplete coordination bond that basically happen on the surface of the cathode materials. Whereas for the lithium two, they appear on the higher position of the binding energy is actually the bulk lithium. Okay, in bulk lithium, in other way, we say that this is the complete coordination number of the lithium. All right. Whereas uh, this one is belong to the uh, uh, oxygen that belong to chemisorb at the higher binding energy and the lower binding energy belong to the uh, bulk oxygen. Okay. So based on this uh, analysis, we found that by introducing titanium inside the cathode uh, crystal structure, we found that all the uh, binding energy of the element are shifted toward the bind higher binding energy. So that means uh, it's expected since we introduce something to the uh, cathode structure which will interrupt or we will give a stress to the uh, original electron surroundings okay, inside the crystal structure. So of course it will push the binding energy toward the higher binding energy resulting from the stress given by the foreigner uh, dopant. Okay, so to further improve, uh, just a little bit more, to further improve on the uh, finding based on the titanium dope, nickel, cobalt, oxide, cathode materials, so we try to uh, increase or we try to improve further still by using doping technique we know that by by using this uh, aluminium which is aluminium one oxidation state it can act as a pillar into our crystal structure which is it can withstand by doing a repeated uh, charging discharging it can withstand the structure can withstand okay during uh, repeated charging and discharging so this is very important because we want to improve further in terms of lifespan of the batteries materials okay and also we want to improve in terms of uh, energy capacity of the material itself so our strategy is that we will substitute aluminium at the cobalt side which is wyckoff position 3b and also at the aluminium at the nickel side at the wyckoff position of 3b also okay that is our strategy so we want to find the optimum structure where this uh, aluminium can give uh, excellent electrochemical performance okay and we still performing quantitative uh, xrd analysis by using reveal refinement and then okay we found that by doping aluminium into this uh, lithium nickel cobalt titanium okay first of all you can see this information regarding on the ion mixing okay lithium takes place on the nickel side nickel takes place on the lithium side which is 3a is the wyckoff position for the lithium 3b is the wyckoff position for the uh, nickel so we can see that the ion mixing reduce 
for the sample of aluminium dope at nickel site, which is a very important criteria. We expect that if we reduce the KIO mixing, the electrochemical performance will have uh, excellent in terms of uh, electrochemical performance. Why? Because it will increase in terms of stability where the structure can withstand repeated charging and discharging process. Okay. This is the atomic distance of the lithium to the, the oxygen, lithium toward transition metal, transition metal toward the oxygen inside the crystal structure. And then we found that interestingly for the for the atomic distance of the lithium toward to the oxygen, you can see that okay, aluminium, okay, aluminium dope nickel, the distance between the lithium and oxygen is not much changes compared to pristine sample which is the titanium dope sample which is this will improve or will cause excellent in terms of electrochemical performance like i said if we have this uh, larger distance okay it will reduce the energy barrier to be overcome by the lithium ion to move uh, out from the crystal structure so we will take a look into the electrochemical performance after this okay so this is the uh, FISEM result and this is the HR10 result so we just found that by doping the aluminium uh, crystallite size of the materials uh, reduced uh, slightly okay Okay, this is the electrochemical performance of the titanium dope sample and we modified further for the uh, al using aluminium dopant. So this is the LN titanium dope and this is the uh, aluminium dope at cobalt site and this is the uh, aluminium dope at nickel site. And we translate this, we observe in terms of discharge capacity up to 50 cycle only. So then we observe that Okay, the uh, the aluminium dope at nickel site has the excellent performance. As you can see, it can retain their uh, initial discharge capacity up to 50 cycle. Okay, which means that we have successfully improved this thing further. Okay, compared to the previous one. And we also do the test in terms of different current. So we see that at the 3C, which is 1 milliamp, this can work uh, uh, fairly excellent okay so this is the value okay of the electrochemical uh, performance in terms of a charge discharge process okay so as you can see okay this is the after 50 cycle this is the value of discharge energy capacity which is for the uh, uh, aluminium dope nickel it has 165 milliamp per gram Compared to the aluminium dope at cobalt site, it only has 92.8 milliamp per gram. Compared to the our pristine sample, which is titanium dope some, uh, sample, it has uh, 132. So that means aluminium dope at nickel site okay, has uh, excellent properties compared to the uh, LCA and LNCT uh, materials. And of course, for the initial discharge, it indicates that by doping with the aluminium, it improves in terms of uh, initial discharge capacity. For the uh, cathode material, it is very important for you to focus on the two part, which is for part one, initial discharge capacity, because it will indicate whether you have higher energy capacity or not. And for the after you repeatedly charge discharge process, okay, depend on what's how many cycle you want, they will give another information to you regarding on this capacity retention or in simple word, you can say that lifespan of your batteries. Okay. So for the conclusion, okay, we have successfully uh, increased the performance of the lithium nickel cobalt oxide by using the idopen which has a better capacity retention about 92 percent and then we improve further we have successfully improved in term initial discharge capacity by using aluminium dope okay and then we found that okay by doping aluminium at the nickel site the uh, material 
exhibit excellent cycling stability, owning a good capacity of 165 mA per gram 0.50 cycle compared to the uh, pristine material, which is the titanium dope cathode material, which only can sustain about 132 mA per gram. Okay, so uh, I think that's all for this sharing session. So I just want to share with you. Uh, Alhamdulillah, this work just got accepted, okay, uh, uh, last week, okay, on Sunday, and the final version is still do not come out yet, so uh, this has been accepted in the Royal Society of Chemistry, which is the Q1 paper, okay. And for the acknowledgement, I would like to acknowledge, uh, thank you for the Institute of Science UITM. Thank you for Staff Energy and Catalysis uh, Laboratory Center for Functional Materials and Nanotechnology IOS UITM. And thank you for Mohe for giving me uh, FRGS grant to do this research. And for our team, team battery, thanks a lot for uh, Chi Wan Aida Hazwani Wan Azizan, my master student. Uh, thanks a lot for Puan Kalimah Ana Elong, my uh, PhD students, and of course, our uh, my supervisor, which is uh, already retired, Prof. Dr. Nolida Kamurzaman, that act as my advisor in the lithium-ion battery uh, research. So uh, I think that's all from me. Uh, thank you. If you have any question, uh, I will gladly hear it from you. So I pass to our moderator, Dr. Annie Maria. Hello. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, okay. All right. So because uh, I had problem uh, previously from the beginning, uh, actually I have problem with the 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 sounds kind of slow at the okay. beginning. Okay, okay. So I hope that I I managed to solve it. Okay, uh, doctor, thank you very much. Uh, for your sharing and of course uh or oh, very early actually we already have um uh, so now uh i would like to yeah maybe okay so all right so doctor uh actually we already have uh questions uh in the chat message mm -hmm. okay so the first question come from uh dr muhammad sufri Mm -hmm. So he asked you, uh, what is the main factor that contributed uh, to the energy density? Mm. Okay, uh, actually it, it depends on the uh, molar mass of your active material, but not all the elements can contribute to the uh, energy density. And it has uh, been well researched that by using the element like the nickel, nickel will hold the high energy density it as we have the calculation regarding on that matter okay i uh, i can show to you okay so mm -hmm. please do contact me okay so dr supri you can you can have a chat later with uh, dr pidaus so while waiting for other question to come up from the chat message so doctor i would like to ask you a question uh, uh, between uh, the spinel and the layer. Yes. Okay. So, which one, in your opinion, is is better? I think uh uh like uh these uh cathode structure like a layered uh oxide, a spinel oxide, uh uh, uh polyanion oxide. They have their different uh, uh advantage. You know. In terms of spinel, there are some of the uh, user use spinel in their batteries. But uh, for me, uh, since in terms of, uh, like I said, in terms of five commercialized cathode material just now, you can see the performance of the pillars for the properties of cathode material. So you can choose which one that can suit more in terms of your application. So in terms of the, uh, like I said, uh, in terms of the, uh, recharge uh, electric vehicle or the storage and uh, the grid storage they tend to use uh, a layered hexagonal because this is more stable because um, it has been uh, commercialized already so it just uh, left that we try to improve further in terms of high energy capacity and also in terms of capacity retention compared to the uh, spinel just now spinel have the problem with the gentle 
Zantella effect, you know. So it's quite tough to 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 ma maintain the stability due to this problem. So uh, if you ask me, uh, that's why I choose uh, to work on the uh, layered hexagonal structure, which is uh, which is uh, I think it will uh, uh, it will more uh, go to uh, practical, which is a very was you know in terms of electric vehicle we can shoot in terms of the uh, maybe electric bus or maybe into the uh, wearable device so we can channel it into this kind of application okay doctor so it looks like we, actually we still have more times around uh, 10, 11 minutes more so <laughs> Uh, I was still waiting for for the question to come up from the chat message. So mm -hmm. while I think I have to I, I have to ask you some more question. Is it okay, doctor? Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. So suddenly there uh there is a question in the in the chat message from yeah I believe it is from uh, Prof uh, Abdul Malik Marwan. Okay, Prof Malik. So he asked about uh he asked you about uh how about the future of nickel rich uh, electrode for lithium ion batteries in comparison to existing commercial cathode material for the lib and what is the main problem related to the nickel rich electrode okay thank you so thank you prof malik for interesting uh, question regarding on the nickel rich uh, materials so like i said nickel rich nickel rich cathode material is very promising uh, technologies why because if you take a look into the into the uh, tesla you take a look into the bmw they focus on this uh, layered hexagonal structure which is the nickel rich electrode why because they show promising uh, potential okay to be improved further in term of uh, rechargeable lithium ion batteries in term of tesla okay in term of tesla in term of uh, cattle from the china they tend to use uh, get like i said to get rid of the cobalt itself they try to use uh 95 percent okay if i'm not mistaken we already have the synthesis of nickel rich cathode material with 95 percent of the nickel content by reducing cobalt up to maybe around five percent only but the main problem is once you once you increase in term of nickel which is up to very high content Okay, the main problem is the uh, higher chances for the cation mixing to occur. So this is the major problem for nickel rich cathode materials. If you can control these things, which is you reduce the uh, the chances of the nickel, uh, which is uh, the chances of the cation mixing to exist in your cathode materials. So it will use uh, excellent performance. So uh, your question regarding on the main problem related to the nickel rich electrode is itself is actually based on the the answer would be the present of uh cation mixing why okay like i said cation mixing is the uh, is only happen for the lithium ion with the nickel two plus ion so you just imagine you you introduce more nickel content into the cathode materials of course the chances to have more cation mixing is possible you know so that is the uh is the uh is the main challenge of the nickel rich electrode so despite of the micro cracking and so on okay very well doctor so okay we have uh, seven more minutes doctor can you allow more questions to go oh sure okay so all right so meanwhile waiting for other to to shoot their questions at the uh, chat message so maybe i can have uh, maybe I can ask you a question, yeah, doctor. So, yes, uh, sure. I'm, so I'm pretty much interested on your uh, quantitative study of the X-ray diffraction, doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why is it very important for us uh, to do the quantitative uh, X-ray diffraction study? Why don't we mm -hmm. just, uh, leave it to the qualitative XRT? Uh, actually, it, it is depend on the uh, on the nature of uh, of the researchers. Actually, if they want to 
study in term of more toward the application they just can go toward the application performance itself but in order to understand more toward to the uh, uh, atomic scale which is we must know what is the uh, happen inside our crystal structure so the possible way okay we can do this by performing the verifiable method and by combining it by combining it with the TEM studies it will create a concrete evidence okay if we use for example today's technology we have the atomic resolution microscopy which is we can observe we can observe okay the distance between atoms directly using naked eye of course it's not a naked eye the powder is not the naked eye but we use arm arm instrument which is by combining the verifiable method okay we've got the information regarding on the uh, crystallography information of your crystal structure and then we can observe it through the arm so we confirm further and then there are some aspects that we cannot uh, possibly uh, explain but by using density of state which is the first principles technique and combine these three together this is what happened this is the high-end uh, research that has been carried out by the by the uh, MIT by the Oxford by the Cambridge okay, they already combine all these techniques together in order to explain the fundamental properties of the synthesized cathode materials in order to explain further why this material better than the other so i think it is uh, important to study in terms of uh, crystallographic parameter itself okay okay doctor very well. thank you very much for that information uh, for the answer Okay, doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe there is no other uh, questions uh, from the. Uh, one question. Okay. Yeah, one question. Okay, from who? Uh, Oscar. Oh, Oscar. Oh, no. yes. Oscar. Yes. Okay. Apa, uh, good, uh, good presentation. Very interesting uh, regarding your recent uh, battery chemistry. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering that uh, you are using combustion method, is it? Yes. So normally, uh, how much? powders that you will get from that are we talking about uh, one gram two grams or oh, depend on your wanted mass okay. because we do in term of uh, before we do the combustion method we must perform so that we get the exact stoichiometry we must perform in term of calculation regarding on the yeah. ratio so for example in my case let's say we started to use the wanted mass of the uh, five gram five gram so basically we can achieve up to uh, 2.5 to 3 gram but depend on your fuel also because the fuel control the energy of the combustion so let's say if you like to produce uh, a big quantity of the your cathode material based on your uh, mm -hmm. chemistry is there any other uh, method that can be used other than this combustion method yes sure Okay, you can use uh, because the commercialized one, they use the co co precipitation method. They use co precipitation method, which is this one has been uh, well established. Why? Because they use uh, uh, actually co precipitation is quite complex because you need to set up the reactor, you need to you need to uh, monitor in terms of pH control and so on. But the problem with co precipitation method, like I said in my earlier presentation just now, we also want to control in terms of uh, crystallite dimension of our single particle and secondary particle. But by using co precipitation method, it's quite it's quite difficult because we already introduced in term of uh, starting material that already exists in term of nickel cobalt manganese so basically now with this technique and then they just inject in term of the lithium carbonate and the precipitate occurs so it's very hard to to produce a smaller a single particle of the cathode material which is by having the smaller single uh, particles of the cathode material it will increase in term of lithium promotion during the charging discharging so it will improve further in term of electrochemical performance but of course for the commercialization that exists nowadays they use co precipitation method so oh thank you for the uh, explanation thank you mm -hmm. the, 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 Okay, thank you, Dr. Oscar. All right, Dr. Fidaus, one last question, perhaps. So we mm -hmm. have another two minutes. Uh, there is a question from the viewers who mm -hmm. is 
Siti Rabiza. Mm -hmm. uh, in your opinion, how about the graphene-based battery compared to your study? Uh, when we talk about, uh, uh, let, let me understand first. So you talk about graphene-based battery. Okay. Is it is it a cathode based on the graphene itself or uh, on the anode graphene itself? So we, we must clear about that one. So I, I need to be clear so, first. So maybe maybe it re refer to the cathode perhaps, Doctor. Okay, so if we refer to the cathode, since I do not perform this uh, kind of combination, but uh, first of all, let's think why we use graphene, why we inject graphene into your cathode material. So basically, perhaps we want to increase, increase in terms of conductivity network. So maybe it will enhance in terms of... Uh, uh, effectivity of the uh, lithium movement inside our uh, lithium ion batteries so i don't know maybe it will help uh, in terms of uh, uh, conductivity network i think mm. uh, okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right <laughs> cannot can, cannot comment more because i do not do this kind yeah. of research yeah yes. Okay, so very well. I think uh, that's all. And uh, we also are heading towards the end of the session, Doctor. So okay. perhaps that's all. Okay, so I I wish to thank you very much and uh, to Dr. Fidaus. And of course, okay. we pray for your many successes to come with your research works in the future. And yeah. of course, thank you very much uh, to all the viewers uh, for your great support. Uh, and shoot the questions at the very end of the session. <laughs> Even though it's not the question. Okay, but yeah, I think that's all the question. Okay, uh, for your great support and cooperation. And yes, uh, please find the registration link at the chat box already given uh, by the host. So uh, actually, we are going to have more webinar session in coming days. And so that, please uh, stay alert and connected to our webinar messages and email. And of course, uh, we are still currently in uh, CMCO in Klang Valley. And so please uh, do stay safe. Uh, do avoid uh, crowded places, uh, less physical contact, and stay connected online. Cause uh, jaga SOP kita. So for that, uh, Doctor, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And salam sejahtera. Bye-bye. Okay, Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Doctor.